Okay, all right. We're back again for uh, another... We're going to play some more of uh, World in Economica, episode one. All right, let's continue. It has been a little while since uh, the last time we've uh, done this, so uh, let's see what happens next here. Of course, search around blindly would be something an idiotic earth dog would do. I took my computer out of my backpack, booted it up, and took a picture of the flower with its camera. I then used an image search on the net and determined what type of flower it was. Furthermore, since doing something bizarre like growing stuff like flowers in the moon could only be due to curiosity, I entered the flower's name in the name of the area around here. Pretty intelligent guy. Get on there, take a picture, do an image search. Okay, now you know what type of flower or uh, it might be. There's probably a few flowers that look very similar. But I don't know that much about flower, you know, flowers and stuff, but there might be a few that have similarities. Having done that, I found a picture uploaded by some bored or and or curious person of the flower nearby and hooray, I located the whereabouts of this flower. Oddly. This post that came up here all also had also something to do with the church. Oh, look, this. Isn't this just a cliff above us? A flower, Afsiando, who lived nearby, had written a post profoundly proclaiming that he had taught Lisa how to grow flowers. This was surely the garden on the cliff that I had seen when I left this place earlier today. And I certainly had the feeling I saw a peak of blooming flowers, too. I turned towards Havana, who was busy with the cleanup and had occasionally snuck glances at me, and rotated the display toward her. I guess they're blooming on the cliff above us. I see. I need two flowers. Don't mess up. I didn't seem it didn't seem like she had even an ounce of inclination to retrieve the flowers herself. Having lost the will to get angry, I closed the computer and got up from the floor. She just expects you to get it, huh? <laughs> even though a lot of what happened right there, from what I remember from the previous thing, was kind of her fault in a way. I hopped up to the second floor, and then onwards to the third floor. And I stuck something in the annoying auto-locking door to keep it open and went outside. From the lights on the door, I could tell it was almost time for evening mode to kick in. The earth appeared in its usual location and showed me its faint blue figure. I scanned the garden, which had a great view and looked like it would be quite a nice place in which to hang out. After looking around, I found the lilies growing in a flower bed just like in the photo. When I approached it, five flowers fluttered in the light breeze. Since they were so fresh, young, and full of life, I paused, wondering if I should really uproot them. Although I could not see any traces of seven flowers having been uprooted before, there was no mistake the flowers Lisa had were originally picked from here. I pulled up two, took the dirt off them, and then carried them back down. When I got back, the living room had returned to normal, and Hagana was sitting at the table. She looked at the two lilies in my hands and frowned. Why is she frowning for? What? You said two, didn't you? The roots are still attached. I took a deep breath and responded slowly. Well, you didn't say that you didn't want the roots. I thought she just ignored that, but she stared at me for a bit and nodded in agreement. Disappointed, I handed the two lilies to Hagana. I got up and grabbed a pair of scissors from the cupboard and started cutting up the flowers in the sink. Her firm movements gave the impression that she was quite experienced at this. Unfortunately, it was an appearance only, 
She was cutting them straight across the stem. You don't know how? I asked her quickly. How to what? Here, let me see. Why? <laughs> oh, she's probably like, how dare you say I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You can grab this from me? She fell with her brows in surprise. Just as I approached her and stretched out my hand, she handed me the scissors and the flowers. For this situation, she cut in diagonal to the stem. It basically lets the stem absorb water a lot more easily. Well, it didn't apply to everything, but it was a basic rule of thumb, as I had learned at home. I cut the two stems at an angle, and the guy who had been staring at my hands looked at me. Is that true? Probably. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. He's like, I don't know. I think it is. I'm not an expert on that type of stuff, so I can't say for sure. I'm certain as well. I can only believe what the hell is being shown here. Either that or look it up myself. Said that with a shrug. I think I showed a bit of rare emotion in response to my vague response. A slight wrinkle appeared on her forehead, and she lowered her chin. Well, it appeared that Hagana wasn't good with these types of things. Perhaps as a reaction to being stepped on all the time, I started flaunting my knowledge. So, I take it you don't know that you're not supposed to store vegetables lying on their side. Vegetables? Their freshness will depend on whether you lay them on their side or stand them up. Getting a slightly startled face, as if she were saying, That's impossible! when she stared at me. She then brought her lips back together quickly. Oh, hey. It looked like she was kind of angry. My heart sang for joy. <laughs> you're, you're, are you still, are you still, both of you still just not on good terms? I don't think there's that much for you to get angry at, man, or, or upset with her at. I know that she can kind of be annoying at times and things like that, but your anger should be used for other things, I mean. Being angry at her is just a waste. Literally. She hasn't really done anything to you, and you really haven't done anything to her. Really? That deserves much anger. All of it has been misunderstandings and everything like that. So, I think... How about you act a little more grown up, man? Don't need to play off like that. <laughs> Looks like she thought that was making fun of her. That's a lie, right? you test it out. I immediately returned with the retort. My dad once said that. Just as humans would weaken if put in a different environment, vegetables would also weaken if placed in a different orientation from when they were growing. And therefore, there's a difference on how well they kept. It looked like she was just glaring at me, but eventually she turned around and looked at the flowers while speaking in almost quiet whisper. I'll keep that in mind. I thought exhibitantly you had played good behavior. But then her second line came out. Since I'll verify it someday. While still thinking cute, couldn't really describe thing, this woman, I did feel that this was the first time we were able to have a real conversation. I gotta retrieve the flowers from me without a word and still without a word, place them in the vase. That behavior made me sense a bit of humanity from her, and wonder if I didn't really have to have such a prejudiced view. If anything, if the flower-loving Lisa had raised these flowers, she'd be distraught if she came back to find some flowers missing. Grandpa's consideration for Lisa is wanting to replenish the number of flowers. Well, I'd have to say that it was girly. I thought that it would be really nice if some of that humanity could be directed towards me, but of course, I couldn't say that out loud. <laughs> so you kind of want her to, like, maybe this guy kind of secretly likes her in a way. He just doesn't have it admit. Because he wants her attention, it seems, right here, what he's saying. It's like, I want her to act like a girl in front of me. You know, act like a girl would be to me, you know, when she talks to me. It's the group way. <laughs> you want him you want him to act a little girlish around you and maybe give you a little uh, 
with that girlish charm that you would expect a girl to do. I mean, I think she could be cute. I do like girls with darker hair. Actually, I felt defeat at the point when I thought of that and chased those thoughts out of my head. I ended up holding myself up in the room I was renting and spent the time searching for money spinners. I felt kind of depressed, but rather than wasting time and money roaming Red Valley aimlessly, I figured I might as well actually spend some time doing things related to making some bucks. Even the ever-changing world economy news headlines were full of things that could determine movements of the markets tomorrow. If my rivals throughout the world were going to read these articles to plan for tomorrow's trades, then ignoring the news would give me a handicap for the battle ahead. To win the battle, I must do everything possible. Driven by something like exception, obsession, I poured through the news stories, but there were limits to my concentration and patience. I could concentrate on actual trading for hours on end, but I'd gradually lose focus while doing the sort of manual labor that was akin to warm-up exercises. However, I managed to look through everything. By that time, I started feeling a dull pain in the back of my eyes, and the light outside my window indicated it was evening already. Amongst the investors of the world, and sedotes abound about people who started investing when they were five years old, and I never missed a day reading the top ten economy news for decades. And sedotes, I guess that's what it says. Suddenly, I asked myself whether I had been spending my days in such a way that I'd be able to fight with them or even f on even footing. Right now, results had accompanied my trading. My seed money had grown. Recently, however, slump days of neither gains nor losses like yesterday had risen. If it broke even during actual trading, then I incurred losses from the trading fees. Furthermore, my necessary living expenses added to those losses. It would be a lie to say that I wasn't uneasy. I was well aware that if there were days where I incurred losses or did not perform that well, then I'd be inclined to needlessly feel depressed about it, especially on the evening of that day when the markets are closed at the end of a week. For those kids who actually went to school, they'd have club activities and play around for the day. The advent of a new week, just like the previous, brought a sense of stability. I never had no such luxury since each new week would be an unprecedented week full of surprises. Back when I was in the village, I dreamed of stimulating days like this every day, but the days when I had the opposite opinion had started to increase recently. Well, it is, it is kind of nice to have, you know, a, mic, a, a change in your day-to-day -day week. I mean, you think about it, most people in the world, they end up doing a lot of the same shit every, every week. I mean, you look at it, you get up, you get ready or you eat or whatever, you go to school if you have school, you go to work if you got work, you spend the, your usual time there doing pretty much around the same stuff. There might be a little change from time to time there, and then you go home and you usually end up doing about the same thing, and then you start over again. And it goes, and then again, and usually the only real change is weekends, when you got, when you don't have that usual day-to-day -day thing. I think that's why so many people look forward to the weekends, other than not having to, you know, actually do those things like school or work. You actually have freedom to do whatever the hell you want, for the most part. This line of thought wasn't good, I felt. Feeling depressed brought nothing good. Going back to the village and attending school again was definitely impossible. Therefore, I need to look forward and spend time constructively. I got up from the bed and, with my light headache spreading a frown across my face, I opened the computer again. Being able to do something about the tug of war being played on my funds would at least make me feel more relieved. With that in the back of my mind, I received one of the three scheduled emails of the day from a securities company. It was a mailing list service that sent information about shitty investment trust and shady investment opportunities, but occasionally interesting info came out of it, so I decided to pursue, peru, peruse it. 
As always, while I was staring at the table of contents, my mouse cursor had already reached the trash bin. However, what caused my head to twitch and click the, the touch mouse was not that the email was full of crap, the opposite in fact. Amongst the meaningless junk, there stood out of the rare something that had some value. An invitation to an investment contest. I had heard of contests that invited people who excelled at stock trading, but was surprised that they invited me. Furthermore, the grand prize was 200,000 mules. My current net worth stood at 70,000 mules, so if I won, I'd increase my funds threefold. However, what drew me in the most wasn't that. Within the invitation for this contest was the following set of catch lines. All eyes from Scrolldinger Street are on this contest. In addition to the prize matter, the winner might have the possibility of getting scouted. The winner last time, Mr. Tony Rudy, was recruited into Plantina Smith, and the winner of the first contest, Mr. Jan Shuhu, ended up starting his own hedge fund. What lies in store for the winner this time, this third time? Hmm. It was a bunch of cheap words intended to draw attention, but having been attracted, I couldn't reject those words. Me, I would, uh, I would do some research before accepting it. Like, are those true? Look up those guys and maybe see if it's true, the information that it states there. I mean, if I received an invitation like that, you know, I'd be like, okay, is this real? <laughs> Unless you know it is 100% real. Who knows, maybe he does. The prize money was obviously important, but the possibility of being able to get a foot in the door of Schrodinger Street. Schrodinger Street. Schrodinger. I think that's how it's pronounced. Schrodinger. Schrodinger. Maybe it's Schrodinger. I'm trying to remember how this is like pronounced. An O with two dots above it. Usually I don't see such things. <laughs> the single phrase totally blew me away. To work in such a firm the proper way. I'd have to study my butt off to get into a top tier university and graduate with the top grades with a top of the line major. Furthermore, I wouldn't just be competing with, competing with people from the moon. I'd also be competing with a select few brilliant immigrants from Earth. Therefore, this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me. But, even briefly looking through my current situation, I could see my grim reality in one way. If I could repeat my fantastic dash that I managed to do right after leaving home, this prize could definitely be in my reach. However, right now, I felt like I was in a tunnel with no visible exit. I probably needed some different type of methodology from that I've been using up until now. While pondering that, and copied out the contents of the email and saved it, just in case. Hmm. Oh, it's nighttime. I wasn't sure how much time had passed by, but I heard sounds singling that Lisa had come back. It had gotten quite dark outside, and I just realized that I had been in my own world, picking out stocks with the lights still off. I guess this was all I could really do, but I think my concentration level wasn't all that bad. My body made some crackling sounds as I stretched, and I headed for the living room while taking a break. At that instant, I smelled something delicious. My eyes turned unconsciously toward the kitchen. And I was in the middle of setting some Chinese food on the table. While wondering what about when they had the time to cook, I noticed a large takeout basket under the table. Delivery? Lisa, who was taking out small serving plates from the cabinet, chuckled at my question. Leftovers. Well, it's part of the reasons why I'm done. Well, I don't mind. As someone who constantly paid and ate at the Lunar Chinese restaurant, I had mixed feelings about this, but I had no qualms with the price and the taste. I quickly took my place at the table. Hagana, who was still taking out food from the basket, stared unequivocally at me. Why aren't you helping? Because you didn't ask? I had lifted my hands up in a shrug to tease her, and she frowned her brows. 
I was grinning smugly at my revenge for all the things she did to me when she delivered a surprise attack. Help out. Normally in this situation, wasn't she just going to swallow those worlds silently in irritation? At least I had expected that she'd be all pissed off, looked down, ignore me while she continued with the preparations. It seemed that Lisa also had the same thoughts. I guess I kind of really was a tough customer. Well, thinking about that, I got even more daggers from my gun's eyes. They were saying, I asked you, so get to work now. <laughs> I shrugged, got up from my chair, and set the plates and chopsticks I got from Lisa on the table. Leeson stared at the two of us intently. Well then, let's give our thanks to the Lord and Mr. Wang from the restaurant. Oh look, they're sitting down there and eating. There's our main protagonist. There's Hagana. There's Lisa. She got the big boobies, I'm not gonna lie. With Lisa's words, dinner commenced. Basically, the food used plenty of ingredients that were on the verge of going bad, but they were pretty much no different in taste. In fact, it was delicious. We polished off items that generally came in combo sets like twice cooked pork, bell pepper pork stir fry, and egg rolls. So, what did you do all day? Lisa asked us just as again I used her chopsticks to block me from taking a third sumai from a platter that originally held six. Before I could respond, Hayana, don't you know division? Lisa used her own chopsticks to place a sumai, each in Hayana's plate and mine. Hayana and I both looked back at Lisa, telling her that it was her share. But Lisa replied with, We must share what we have. In a smile. Apparently it was written in the Bible or something. I shrugged, popped the shumai in my mouth. Agana, who was more hesitant, ended up being hers as well. I have no idea what a shumai is. What the hell is a shumai? I don't know what a shumai is. I know what an egg roll is, but a shumai. I'm not familiar with it. Well, maybe I have had it before, but I have the name doesn't come to mind. Well, with that, I answer Lisa's question honestly. Went to Newton City. Oh, for what? To scope the place out for a bank heist. I'm joking now. <laughs> Lisa broke into laughter, treating it as nonsense. But I was surprised that Hagana was totally shocked. Duh, it's a joke. With my reply, Hagana's expression changed from one of surprise to one of irritation, and she looked down. She was, for some reason, a bit dense when it came to certain things. So, the real reason? I like those streets. That wasn't a lie. I munched on the salty pickled vegetables and took a drink from my teacup. It's a bit too lively for me. It's that liveliness that brings out my drive. I jumped on half of my third egg roll, then realized, was it kind of staring at me? Oh, there were only six of them to begin with. Lisa noticed us and quickly put one on Hagana's plate. I heard that Hagana only had this kind of appetite when it came to Chinese food. I don't know what you're doing with that tribe, but in either case, it's pretty good. I became a little humble when faced with Lisa's smile. She is a nice woman, though. She really is. I mean, she's allowed you to stay there. Of course, not for free, but she allowed you to stay there. And then, of course, she has Hagana staying there. She, she, she's pretty. She's nice. I mean, a big place, I guess. Maybe she probably gets lonely there, too. So I guess she wouldn't probably mind you guys being there. I was wondering if she was making fun of me, but she had the usual carefree smile. Well, since I did provide you shelter, I would obviously be happy if you rested up and did your best. Oh, really? It's kind of pointless if you don't put in the effort yourself. Hmm. Well, I guess. It's true. This is the moon, after all. There was no point being here if you didn't work hard. If you wanted to just cruise along leisurely, 
than you could have done it on Earth. Ah, uh, that's great. This is the moon after all. Let me see if it mimicked my voice, causing me to choke on a piece of pork I had been eating. She was enjoying herself happily, but she was trouble in a different way from Hagana. Alright then. What about you, Hagana? What did you do today? Being perhaps satisfied with the usual teasings, Lisa had turned to Hagana and asked her what she did. I was also nearly interested in the reply. I wonder what she was doing while holed up in her room. She made no sound and occasionally got up to go to the bathroom. Hagana slowly finished her pepper pork stir fry as if she couldn't decide whether it was tasty or not. And then she replied unhurriedly. The same as usual. It was terribly blunt. But Lisa wasn't put off by it. So, you got up, ate your meal, hung up the laundry to dry. And then returned to my room to work on problems. Problems? I thought to myself. Yes, what problems? I wonder what those are. What does she mean by problems? I mean, we, we really don't know too much about Hagana, really. The whole time? I went to the bathroom once during the morning and continued to work on problems after getting back. So, did you solve them? Eight of them were pretty quick, but four of them took relatively longer. I see. Mm, that's pretty rare. For four of them to be that difficult. Difficult? Well... I wouldn't say that, but... But? I think they were excellent problems. Pekana spoke with her eyes closed, as if she were pondering the problems again. Lisa broke out in laughter, seeing Hagana like this. You really do like them, don't you? Hagana opened her eyes and slowly turned toward Lisa. And then a small blush developed on her cheeks. Lisa was beaming with an unparalleled smile at Hagana's response. I could have felt like I was watching a dotting parent. But I couldn't say I couldn't understand a little of Lisa's feelings. It was also taken in by Hagana's reply, coupled with her rare show of embarrassment and her slight blush. I couldn't help feeling a sense of defeat. Then again, she'd little look pretty decent if she kept quiet. Besides, Given that she'd normally only show me either a sour face or a face of disdain, I ended up rationalizing with no one in particular that I couldn't help it. I think she could look cute. I kind of like her little mole under her eye that she has. So, uh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Bothered by my internal conflict. Of course, you're sitting there listening to them talk and you've don't know what this problem thing that they're talking about. Of course Lisa knows, or mu must know, because they're having a conversation about it, so she must know what the hell she's talking about. You're kind of left out of the loop here. I'm going to try to distract myself by saying something. Besides, I really was curious. Oh, we're talking about math. Math? You don't even know math? Oh, I, I think he knows math. <laughs> he probably... I, you might feel a little insulted there, our, our guy here. We're gonna stop smiling and asked in response, out of what appeared to be surprise instead of belligerent. As if I were being made fun of, I lowered my voice and replied, Of course I know. <laughs> so, so, I, I, I think she might have been joking a little bit. I mean... I don't really think she thought that he doesn't know math. <laughs> Haven't I mentioned it before? I got us very good at math. If it were just math, she'd be totally able to attend Lunar City University right now. Every year, elite students from all over Earth come to attend Lunar City University. Even I knew how difficult it must be to get into such a place. So, are you working on the entrance exams? She already finished those. Right now... What was it you were working on again? On page 424 of Lloyd F. Steely's Mathematical Theorems. She seems like she, maybe she's smart. 
she replied immediately while drinking her soup. Oh yeah, but you're already 400 pages in. In terms of his in the history of math, it's still stuff from some several hundred years in the past. I had no clue what they were talking about. <laughs> you know, actually that is that's quite nice that a, a female is math in depth. I mean, on average, when it comes to university and everything, at least in the real world, the STEM field, science, you know, and technology, engineering, and mathematics, a lot of females don't enter that field. She seems like an intelligent one. I didn't think that he would actually explain it to me. And I'd be annoyed if I had to ask. Plus, I turned my gaze toward Lisa. Lisa, being her perceptive self, explained it to me with a smile. It's a digital copy I borrowed from the University of a classic book on mathematics. It's a bizarre book that has collected tons of mathematical theorems. 5,621 theorems. I kind of snuck in a word while obviously trying to s split a stem bun in half. We both turned to look at Hagana, then exchanged slight glances with each other. And so, she's trying to redrive proofs for all of these theorems. Redrive? For example, with the, the Plague of Theorem theorem, you try to figure out on your own how to prove it. In other words, reconstructing the history of math built up over the past several millennia. Wow. Assuming me it were true, I'd have no choice but to say awesome to that. I'd probably be able to even at least half forgive the way she looked down on me. In that case, why not just attend the university? With my super logical utterance, Lisa and Hagana both looked at me with pity. But even if it's just one subject, to totally ace it would give you a free pass in, right? Not like there's age restrictions, right? Yeah, how old is she? I forgot. It's been a while. I don't know if they mentioned age. It's been a while since I've uh, uh, last I played. There are no age limits, and tuition can be covered by a scholarship, but there's a problem, right? Oh. What's... what's the problem? My mind was blank for a bit after Lisa's words, but eventually I got it. That's right. I think I was a runaway. Ah, oh, that might be it, yeah. But limitations due to parent, legal, guardians, etc. only apply under until she becomes an adult. Life is long, so might as well take it e easy in the meantime, right? Oh, that, yeah, so she has to wait until she's actually considered an adult. Before she can actually try. Because otherwise she needs parent, legal, guardian, permission type of stuff it looks like. Lisa smiled at Hagana. Hagana's nod at those words was filled with an aura of earnestness. It seems that people have their reasons. I'm gonna shrug and drank some egg drop soup. So, that's all you two did today? What do you mean all we did today? F well, for some reason, after I came back, it seemed that there's been developments in how you treat each other. The soup in my mouth was in just from being spewed out. What the heck was that supposed to be? Oh, oh. I feel like something happened between you two that I don't know about. Would you care to fill me in? This woman sure loves to dig into detail, even at the restaurant. This woman? Lisa asked back, full of smiles. However, those were certainly not smiles of happiness. I thought back the last time I had stepped on this landmine. Y you sure love to dig into details. Yep, well... It's kind of like a job to me. <sighs> Wait, a job? Never heard of a stream job like that. Well, it's kind of strange to call it a job. My duty? Well, something like that. It's not like I like doing it, you know? She said that, but it had to be a hobby. Besides, 
She herself didn't seem to be saying those words seriously. Wait, I'm getting sidetracked. Well, nothing really happened. Oh, wait, when I got back from Newton City? Oh no, did Hagana just do something? When I got that far in my sentence, there was a racket under the table. That was because I kicked up, and if you were to ask me why, it was because my opponent kicked my shins with all her might. Oh, I kind of want to keep it a secret. Ow! What the hell are you doing, bitch? Holy shit, he just called him a fucking bitch! Holy shit! <laughs> Holy crap, man! I was... now... I don't think that was the best way of... Um, doing that, because now she definitely knows that something happened. I was so abrupt that an angry yell was the most I could muster. Well, Lisa's eyes were wide open with surprise. I was surprised too. I didn't strike back immediately. Not because I thought Lisa would get angry, but because I had no idea what the heck was going on. Yeah, I was kind of surprised. I didn't expect you to just freaking call her a bitch. Hey, hey, Hagano, what are you doing? Lisa asked a question. Hagano turned away and stayed silent. What? Is she a kid? Well, that behavior ma really makes her seem like a stubborn brat. I'm rubbing my shins. I was wondering whether she didn't want me to talk about it. I couldn't figure out exactly what would make her want to avoid that at all costs. What? So something did happen. Oh. Well, there was that. It's about to begin. Anna glared at me. However, we said how to got back with her arms. And with that, the gonna looked like she was about to cry. I was surprised that Hagana would be so against my telling the story. It appeared Lisa wasn't so. I could see it from Hagana's expression. With a light sly, Lisa looked at me with a tired expression. Mr. Toyama came, I guess. Toyama? He didn't come here to collect on a debt. I kind of tried her best to stop Lisa. But once those words came out, the strength left her as if the end of the world had come. He sure did. And did you know? I was about to detail the ruckus that happened after I got back to the church. But then my eyes met Hagana's. Those eyes were filled with supplication. I was more than a little surprised at such a pompous egotistic being able to make such a face. Making Toyama fly off the walls had probably happened once or twice before, and I didn't think Lisa had condoned such behavior. My heart wasn't so shriveled as to totally rule out staying quiet after seeing such a humble entreaty from Aunt Hagana. And did I know what? I took the receipt from my pocket and handed it to the acceptant, Lisa. I paid off the interest for you, so pay me back later. Staring for a few seconds at the 200 mole receipt she set on the table, Lisa looked at me with a sigh. So, now I owe you now instead. Much better than that bold eye, right? Lisa knew she sh shouldn't laugh, but couldn't hold back. She then took the receipt. Well, Mr. Tram also has a hard time, you know? Well, he does look like kind of unfortunate. Hey. I shrugged unnaturally at Lisa's remark and worked on the rest of the stir fry. I know she had put 200 moles into the cabinet, but when I looked at Lisa's face when she held the receipt, I didn't feel like telling her to get that out. Well, just continue enjoying your meal. I mean... There's no reason I don't think to push it. You're gonna be there for a little while. Unless you really need the money, you know? I wouldn't push it. She's a nice person. I don't think she would, uh... Stiffy on that money. 
thought maybe I did something stupid, but if the time came, I could always just ask her to nullify the rat. I stuffed my stomach full of pork and peppers and blitch belch during my next words. You could also, you know, if you planned on staying there another, you know, you know, period of time, you could just do that. Be like, hey, you know, pay me the 200. I'm going to be staying here another month. That's okay. So don't worry about it type of thing. It's like, you just don't expect any payment because <laughs> you already got the money. Well, just pay it back when you can. I also owe some favors too. Well, if you could put things more appropriately, you'd probably be popular with the girls, you know. Well, he is kind of an asshole at times. I mean, as we progress through the story, he definitely has a very asshole side of him. <laughs> ha. I snickered and drank my tea. I was even a little ashamed of myself for wondering if that's what I was missing. I'll pay you back soon. Well, how soon would depend on that. Lisa chuckled bleakly, and I got almost definitely glaring at me after seeing Lisa's expression. She probably thought that I didn't deserve any thanks, but reason didn't really fly with this girl. Thanks for the dinner. I paid no heed to Hagana, got over my chair, and went back to my room. Okay, guys, I think after this meal right here, I think this is a good little, a good enough as spot as any to end this off. It has been a while since uh, I recorded, so hopefully you enjoyed this newest one that's here. I will say there's a lot of text here, and it does, it is slow moving for the most part. But I mean, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you if you uh, have anything to say about it, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. If you liked the video, feel free to leave a thumbs up. And if you uh, you want to see more videos like this and others, feel free to subscribe. There's plenty of those. I release them on a daily basis, and I have no plans of stopping anytime soon. And in the description box, I will have a link to this game on um, Steam. So if you want to check it out there, as, as well as a link to my other uh, YouTube channel. So if you want to check that out, feel free, as well as a link to my uh, blog. Again, I want to thank you for watching this, and you all have a great day.